Hey YouTube and thank you for watching Junkworks DIY Garage. Well I said I'd put a video together kind of all the products and equipment that I used uh, for my Jeep 04 Jeep Liberty the welded patch I put in there. I did a patch, I did body work, and then I did paint work. And all this I did with fairly budgeted uh, minded ways in mind. Um, and I even did it kind of more like the first timer would probably end up doing it. Um, I did not do anything perfectly. So if you would like to go watch how to do that, uh, even on a budget, um, please go watch those videos. So to start with, we have the good old die grinder here um, with the wire wheel on it. That's what I use to kind of get into the pits and the pock marks of my rust and really clean it out. These will clean them out almost as good as sandblasting maybe not quite as good but it's a cheaper easier way to go than sandblasting um, and they do a pretty good job in fact I've I've even seen where after sandblasting these went in we got some rust out with these a little bit deeper down so they work really good um, the ones I get are, are most of the ones I have are from Harbor Freight um, so you can decide what you want on that so now, if you don't have this, yet again, this will work. You, you can buy um, wire wheels that'll go on these here. So, um, you know, $9.99 Harbor Freight all day long. But this is what I used, and these work really, really good if you have access to a fairly large or a decent sized air, air tank. So starting out, we have this with the wire wheel, and that works really well. Now on top of that, to cut things, I put the thinner disc on here. I also have another disc that is thicker that I did quite a bit of grinding. This is actually, a, I believe, in my opinion, one of the better ways to go rather than grinding things with this because you can kind of concentrate just on certain areas and it, if you move around a lot, these are actually fairly cool. Uh, they, don't, they don't make as much heat. And next, we have this. Just a good old fashioned grinder, uh, works off air yet again. Um, might have questions on the discs here. Um, these ones are, uh, unless you're I think working a professional shop, these ones are a little harder to find these days, but um, you can still get them, I'm pretty sure. Um, I have a bunch of old ones from when I did some uh, work in a welding shop. I I actually did janitorial work in a welding shop and I would they would just throw these on the ground every couple of seconds I swear they weren't hardly used at all and they allowed me to take boxes of these home and I still got a pretty good sized box of them and I just cut the edges off of them they didn't cut them down I cut them down to smaller and smaller sizes and you'll notice I have these flat areas kind of cut straight and I don't even worry about if they're even or anything like that that just helps them cut real fast um, instead of cutting in circles. Plus it's easier to cut them down to shapes and sizes rather than try and cut a circle. But it does help. It does cut faster and also yet again I think doing it this way it kind of hits these areas and works them down and then you can cut these off and get a little bit more out of it. Plus when it only hits every so often it keeps it cooler as well. That's the biggest thing about grinding with any any kind of grinders, no matter what you're using, uh, heat buildup. You gotta really watch it. You gotta keep moving and kinda keep feeling. Just use the back of your hand. That's how I did it anyway. Use the back of your hand and touch. Um, the back of your hand doesn't burn quite as bad as the, as the front. So, you know, if it's warm then you, and you can't touch it, then you need to stop because you are probably warping the metal. So there's that yet again. One of these will work for all that. They're not quite as small and compact as these things, so you gotta work a little harder getting them places, but you can put these kind of discs on them. You can put flap discs, obviously. You can put uh, you can put the wire wheels on them. You can put the thicker discs like this on them. They'll, they'll take anything that one of these will take, this will do. Um, and it's much cheaper. But, yet again, if you have the ability to get air, and you plan on doing this for a while you probably should get some air and you should get some air tools it just they do work well you can also buy electric versions of all these things as well although i gotta say 
I've never found an electric version or used an electric version of a die grinder uh, that works near as well as an air grinder, air die grinder. So that's to each their own. Now, obviously, welder. Now, in the video, I talk about all this already, so I'm not going to go too far into my welding parts. You can go watch my my patch where I did the patch. And at the end of that, I talk about welder, the welder I use, as well as what a cheaper welder that you can get, obviously, from Harbor Freight or something like that. So, so now it's time for the body fillers and things I use for that. So first of all, did the grinding and welding of the patch in the hole. Then we ground down everything to at least probably 36 grit, I would say, 80 grit minimum um, for the most part. Then we went and we put this on here. And again, I'll put prices below. Um, but this is USC 24030 Duraglass fiberglass reinforced filler. Uh, the rest of that's in another language. It says US chemical and plastics. Boy, I need to start putting my glasses on when I do these videos. Regardless, I was very, very happy with this. I never used this product or even this brand before. And it laid down way smoother than other. I have used other fiberglass fillers in the past. Yet again, old body man. Um, products have come a long, long way since when I first started using them, I think. Um, I think the paint products have gone down because of EPA stuff, I will say, or cheapened out. I think they use EPA in paint products to have an excuse to make a cheaper product. But regardless, paints, although technology maybe has gotten better, coverage, price, and I think even really quality has gone down in paints. But regardless, that's beyond the point. This was a very good product. I have been very happy with it so far. The proof is in the pudding thing down the road. Hopefully I'll still have this car for a long time to come. And we will see where, where and what happened. But normally I would put on a fiberglass filler. Then I would take my regular body filler, which I don't have here, which I did buy. Um, and I'll hopefully have a video on it later on using that on my uh, Mustang or something else. But regardless, normally put the body filler over it and then whatever was left I would use with this. Now, yes, my product, it would have came out better had I went through that, but I did feel that this came out very smooth for what it was and it, it seemed pretty good. It seemed to sand really fairly easily I was happy with it and then this was you have to watch the video to see what the date on this can was that I used of this this is very very old stuff that I happened to find and was able to make it work yet again my own car doing some testing we'll see what happens I also did buy some of this um, new stuff probably should have used that but we'll find out down the road and then this actually came with the Duraglass. Um, I do not believe that some of the stuff I bought actually came with the, the hardener, so that's a, a plus. I, I do not believe that the body filler I bought or the glaze I bought uh, came with a hardener, so I'll keep this around. I tend to use the same hardeners and things, but you gotta be careful with that stuff. Mixing paints, mixing hardeners, mixing products all together can bite you in the butt um, if you don't really kind of know what you're doing and and how to do it you probably should stick with a system where you start from beginning to end with your um, at least paints um, and then products like these use whatever the can says to use um, as far as systems Pretty much any body filler you buy will work underneath any paint you buy, for the most part. I'm pretty sure that's true still. Um, 
So I wouldn't worry about buying the most expensive name brand body filler out there. This stuff was fairly cheap, and so I believe I actually bought the same thing in body filler. Because um, it was a decent price. It seems to get good reviews. People seem to like it, and I, I really like this. Alright, so let's move on. And I almost forgot this. Um, I spread my body filler with these. Yet again, this is what I was taught by an older body man um, and that's just kind of what he used taught me to use it kind of that way um, I actually in school I used a lot of the um, plastic ones and they have their place I've used the plastic spreaders I actually cannot find one that's how little I do actually use them um, and the fact that most of my body working tools are I, I've been digging things out but I haven't found everything yet but regardless, this is what I've used. This one right here, I've used a long time. You can see the body filler built up on here. Um, decades, literally, with this one. And then I have this one here, which I used to have one similar to this that I used. I ended up finding this one so I could have it for this job. Um, but they make these in all different shapes and sizes. You can choose to do, I will say, this one. Go if you find them at garage sales, like old, nice, thick, sturdy ones, pick them up because the ones they make now at the hardware stores are junk. Um, I don't know if you can order better versions of these anymore, but everything I've found at the hardware stores to do stuff has just been just junk. But regardless, you can use those yellow plastic ones, they make green plastic ones, whatever color you want, probably nowadays. But this is what I use. I rarely use the plastic ones because these just really help spread it, really help push it down where it needs to go and get the air bubbles out. Especially when you're stirring, not stirring, but kneading it, uh, mixing your body fillers, this is the way to go because you'll, you'll get all the air bubbles out that a plastic one won't. Then after that, you got your sanding. I did most of my stuff with this right here. Now, I, I'm going to do body filler tool or body work tools, a, a video on that, because I've done other videos on tools and kind of skipped over a lot of my body working tools. But regardless, you can get bigger versions of these. But this worked great for the size I had. Then we have this that I used to kind of finish things off. This is why my body work did not come out as good as it should have. Um, now this is just a smaller version of this right here. This is an orbital sander. Um, we always call them mud hogs. I don't know who or what made this one. I might have said it in the video. I can't read with my, without my glasses. Um, I did find out what this was, thanks to all you who told me what this was. It's the Buffalo Pneumatic is what this is. In case you watched that video of Help Me Out, what is this video? Um, but anyhow, I did not use this, but I thought I'd bring it out because basically I ended up using this the same way. And yet again, this has a harder base with a small soft pad on it, fairly thin. Same with this, harder base with a thin pad. You do not want to be doing body work with a thicker pad one like what I showed in my paint part, or what I will show in my paint part. Um, you want it to be fairly hard and stiff when you're doing body work. Um, but regardless, it all worked out well. I'm happy with it. Now, what you should do, that I did some of, is finish off everything by hand. I did some of that, but yet again, hurry. I was in a hurry and needed to get it done, so I didn't do a ton of hand sanding. But if you haven't done this, it will turn into a huge mess if you try and do everything with uh, with sanders, with uh, pneumatic sanders, electric sanders, whatever. You can buy electric versions of all these things for the most part. I don't know if you can get electric versions of these, but regardless, I know they make electric DAs at the very least. Um, but in the end, you should have a block and a sander. 
All right, now back to sanding. I talked about hand sanding, you should do that. This is pretty much what I used for most of that video there. But yet again, they have different shapes and sizes of these. They have those Dura blocks. I've never found a use to buy those, although they're getting pretty cheap. I may actually pick a set of those up before I get on my Mustang. We'll see how I like them, maybe. Because I have lots of things, and quite honestly, between these and then I have these right here. Now these are what a lot of you might not have seen them. These are pre Dura blocks. Um, these are actually made to put your paper in here, fold it around, you put your paper up in here and go to town. They got it like an aluminum or metal backing of some sort with a little bit of a pad. This one's been used so much the pads wearing off on the ends and stuff so um, probably wouldn't get a great job. I should see if I can find something to repair that with. But regardless, I have sizes that range from all different sizes of these that I'll go through in my body working one. Uh, when I get all my stuff together, probably be down the road because it probably won't be till I'm ready to either do my truck, my Mustang, or a job comes along that I decide I really want to do body work on. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can still probably get something like these besides Dura blocks. Um, they may be plastic. I, I used plastic ones even when I was in school. They had plastic versions of these. I don't know if they still make the wood ones, but um, regardless, you can pick these up, these type of things up anywhere. And there's yet again all different shapes and sizes. This is more of a handyman in the home doing stuff, but I found that that little point gets in places you might want to. I did use on that job a paint stick quite a bit. Um, these fit in lots of places. You can cut them down to whatever size you want, wrap, paper, uh, wrap sandpaper around them and make them work. I've even in the past used very long 2x4s um, that were in better shape and flatter than this. but and. Yet again, things you can't get anymore, good flat 2x4s, they don't almost exist anymore. But you can still get away with it if you find a good one, cut it down. Um, I've used really long versions and fairly short versions of these. And the same as, you know, you can use, you could use the side of this if you want. Anything you can wrap sandpaper around, you can make work. I Obviously dowels. Dowels are great in reverse curves and things like that. But I'm kind of getting off topic now. Um, this is more what I used on my job, which was this, 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 and this. Really that's all I needed to get that job, specific job done. Now when it was all said and done and I was happy with it, I primed, or I, yeah, I primed it all up, and then I used this right here, seam sealer, uh, up in the, up in there. I used this Dynatron. It spread pretty well. I was happy with it. It's number 550. Um, this is for the outside of the car. It says right on here, do not use inside the car, and it stinks. This stuff stank. Um, so, you, you know, fair warning with that. Use it appropriately. Use whatever it says to do on the back you should do. That pretty much covers it right there for the bodywork heading towards the paintwork side. Here's the papers and tapes that in the end I ended up using. Um, now, I showed the cheap painter's tape at first that I started with um, and the duct tape. Uh, I still used this cheap painters tape and cheap tape and duct tape over the top of some of this later on to do stuff. My tape situation kind of changed as the project got more uh, difficult to do, so to speak, I guess. Um, but this stuff here, I, I'm still kind of working on whether or not I like it all that much. It did what it says it would do. But I haven't really got a chance to test it. And what I mean by it does what it says it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be automotive painting tape. Now, in that case, the clear shouldn't go through. Paint shouldn't go through. And you should be able to peel it off without it peeling up paint if you do it at the right time. No matter how you do it, you got to do that at just the right time. But, uh, and for taping off windows and things, 
you should be able to leave it on there for a longer period of time and it won't stick or leave residue now I did not have this tape on for that long and I noticed a couple places where there was a little bit of residue I didn't have any problems with the clear or paint or any of that sticking to it or having problems with it going through or anything like that but I will say I bought this there's two different kinds and it's I don't know they're in millimeters so they're not quite two inches and not quite three quarters of an inch but they do basically the same job they were a lot cheaper than 3M I don't they don't even have a name on here so yet again price and name below if I can find a name but the price below I bought them on Amazon and I bought a box of and I'll say the count down below both of this one and of this one but I bought whole boxes because it was just kind of a cheap way to go I guess and I know at some point I'm going to use it for something um, but regardless I still the jury's out on how effective this is compared to better quality tapes but it did the job for me pretty good I was fairly happy with it it came off for the most part pretty, part pretty good and like I said there was a couple places where I had a little bit of I don't know where it just didn't want to peel off but then it finally did kind of thing so it wasn't too awful bad it, it for the price it did pretty well uh, jury's still out on whether or not I would I would buy this again but I got lots of it so at some point I'll be able to give you a better video on this then we got this paper here this is some leftover stuff that I had since I was a body shop so several several years ago um, this is the end of what I have um, really I'm gonna have to go get more at some point but this right here is good for priming base coats things like that but if you clear over to the top of this stuff um, it will leak through and you will have problems so and same thing pay, don't use newspaper oh. If you're using, a, if you're doing a rattle can quick job on a small spot, you might be able to get away with newspaper. But if you're clear coating at all anything, I don't care if it's rattle can or not. If you're clear coating it, do not use newspaper and do not use the cheap masking paper. That is what this is for. Now, yet again, this is left over from me being an auto body shop. This is USC, um, which. I, like like I said I never thought I used any of their stuff but it is it was probably one of the cheaper things uh, US chemical and plastics is where this came from I don't know if they still make this exact paper because like I said I've had this for decades now um, but this has uh, you can kind of see that it's shiny and real slippery on one side and then just paper on the other and this keeps the clear coat from leaching through into whatever it is you're trying to cover up so this you can pretty much use for everything from beginning to end but quite honestly in between primer and painting you're going to change stuff so use the cheap stuff while you're priming use the more expensive stuff when you're painting and clear coating that's how i've always done it um, this right here is stuff i got free at a garage sale or I had a long time ago. I don't think I ever bought any of this small. That's why I say I think I got it at a garage sale or something for free. But it comes, it has tape on it, a sticky tape. But it's so old that this got, this messed stuff up. I had to do a bunch of cleaning to get some of this off before I went to painting. And I actually still have a little chunk of this on my car. I keep forgetting to get off. But regardless, just know you need to have separate papers for clears. Then last but not least, well last and least pretty much, this right here. And I bought this stuff specifically for this job. I think it's probably made from the same company that makes this tape. I don't know. Um, but I bought it in the kit. All the things I have will have prices below, including this. I was actually somewhat pleasantly surprised with this. The longer one I had, I believe, I don't know, one of them I had the tape. Um, although it, it, it worked, it started coming away from this plastic stuff. And it, this is, you put it over the whole entire car, kind of a big sheet of plastic, basically. 
Um, this just keeps your, you know, dust and oversprays and things off the rest of the car. Now, I did not do it yet again with my Jeep quite as properly as they should. You really should bag the entire car, whatever you're not painting. But, yet again, I was doing a rattle cam paint job, and it was in a small area, so I didn't worry about it too much, but you really, you really should. And it's my car. I just, I, I went as cheaply as I possibly could to get this done, and as quickly as I possibly could to get it done. But beyond that point, this stuff was really cheap. It came in a bundle of this size, a bigger one, I think a couple bigger ones, and a couple smaller ones. I don't know. Yet again, I will put a price below. You can go check it out on Amazon. It was like 12 or 13 bucks, I think. I don't know what the price was. I can never remember prices. I just can't. But regardless, it'll be written somewhere. And it worked actually really well. I thought when I first started trying to pull it out that it was just going to shred because it was so thin and so cheap feeling. But it actually did a pretty good job of not shredding. There was a couple places where it kind of pulled apart and I had to, you know, tape over those spots and things like that. Like I said, there was one where the tape kind of started peeling away from it. So I had to kind of get it back on there and then it, it started kind of not coming off right. So I did have one that wasn't, wasn't quite right. But for the price, this worked really good to bag a car, um, and it was cheap. And that's all you need is something that's cheap that you can throw over the top that's going to keep the overspray and the dust and, and dirt and stuff off the rest of the car. So fairly happy with that product in all actuality. Um, you have to be pretty gentle with it, though. All right, I think that's it. So now we got our paints, primers, DA. This is all mostly for the paint stuff. Some of these cross over into other parts of the video, but for the most part, these are what you need after the body work, but before paint and then paint. And that is a DA. Now for this job, I use this one to do my finish sanding. As you'll notice, on my other one, it had a real thin, to do the bodywork part, uh, it had a real thin, hard backing. And this one has a thicker, more soft backing pad here. And it's a little bit, uh, it's probably pretty close to the same otherwise. This one, this one is a National Detroit, um, older one, made in the USA. It, you know, this thing in its day was a really nice expensive one um, and I use this the heck out of this a lot or used to use the heck out of this a lot but with 320 in this you can pretty much sand all your um, body work down to the point where it's ready to paint and sand down your paint as well to rough it up uh, for painting and priming and that kind of stuff you want to go to at least 320 if you're doing just a normal uh, base coat, clear coat job. You probably want to go to 4 or 600 if you're using candies or metallics or things like that. But quite honestly, I've even used 320 for that a long time ago, but I do think paints are thinner now than they used to be. At least the, the pigments aren't as good as they used to be. So therefore you do have to go to higher amounts, but really 320 for what I did to, on this time is what I used. Plus, then you got your scotch brights. Now, I use these a lot, especially on smaller jobs like I did. And I did a lot of scuffing with these. And you'll notice, if I knew I was gonna be painting over it, I use the red scotch bright or painting or priming or doing anything over I use the red, red scotch bright but if I knew the paint was going to be starting to blend into the original paint that's where I use the gray scotch bright um, this you can scuff up paint for the most part you can scuff up paint and with a good quality clear cover up the scratches from this this is like a four or six hundred maybe this is more like a three three twenty four hundred somewhere around there something like that um, these they start out kind of rough so I usually start out by the paint or by where I know it's going to be covered up by paint that knocks it down kind of smooths it out and then it then it 
sands a lot better, or at least smoother, um, after you've kind of used it a little bit, obviously, because it's just like sandpaper after a while, the grit kind of starts going away. So you want to be careful with these, where you use them, where you put the scratches at and things like that. But for the most part, you can clear over gray. I've done it a lot and never had any problems. This, you definitely want to make sure you're painting or priming and that kind of stuff over because it, it's fairly harsh. All right, so that's the scuffing of paint around the bodywork and things like that. Um, then you got your tack cloths. Tack everything, wash everything. Uh, don't go over the body filler like I said in my video. Do not... Um, go over body filler with alcohol or any other chemicals do not do that I, I would suggest not doing that blow it off good um, and you should be okay for primer then take your tack cloth over everything once that's dried off and then we go to primer now I have this which I bought which is the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 it's a filler and sandable primer now you want to make sure you're using a fillable primer, regardless of if it's a rattle can or not. I'll be honest with you, this is the, the first time I've used some of these paints and things like that um, as far as a rattle can paint job. Because I wanted this to, to see if I could get an almost professional looking job. And I, honestly, I'm very happy with it. And it's been a while and it's still holding up fine. But regardless, I actually did not end up using this because I noticed at Harbor Freight they had this here. Quite honestly, I think this was cheaper. I cannot remember. If I can figure out prices, I will try and put them below. Um, but I got a couple cans of this and it was pretty cheap. So I decided to grab it in case I needed more. I had already grabbed this and decided I wanted to try it because it's my car. This is the best place to test things if it's on your own vehicle because later on I'm the one that has to fix it probably if there's a problem. So anyway, Harbor Freight, the iron or iron or iron, probably iron, um, says complete rust protection, iron, iron armor, I don't know why I'm having trouble with that, sandable primer, partially because I can't see to read is my problem. Says ideal for smooth fill in of surface cracks and imperfections helps achieve top coat uniformity for use on metal, wood, and fiberglass. So, with all these products, do as the can says to do. I shook it up and I sprayed it on, and I was quite happy with this. This actually filled some decently deep scratches there's a couple there's a few scratches I even show in the video that um, obviously it, it missed but mostly that was because I probably didn't didn't sand the body work down to where I should have I'll, I'll full on admit it but I really did just need to get that done after it turned into as big a project as it did but I will say I was very happy with this. I cannot speak to this, but I would be willing to say it probably is pretty good. I like Rust-Oleum. Um, personally, uh, Rust-Oleum is one of my more favorite ones. But I will be trying some of this stuff later on, maybe in the future, if they come out with more of it at Harbor Freight. I was pretty happy with that. So then you got your primer on. Once again, you go back and sand that down with 320. And then you got your paints. Now this, I was very pleasantly surprised with. Um, these are both the same thing. This is the actual color of the car of my Jeep. And I was able to go on Amazon, look up my paint code and find this. Yet again, I will have prices below for what I paid for these ones. Um, and these were at the time the cheapest ones I could find that were in that had my paint color or code on them and I I cannot believe how well this blends with the paint I really can't where I blended or did a decent job of blending it you can't tell uh, anymore when I first did it you could maybe see a little bit but as time has gone on a lot of that is just kind of wore away so I'm I am ecstatic with how well this worked with my paint. 
Does that mean it's going to be good on every one of them? Probably not. There's probably going to be ones where you luck out and it works and sometimes it won't. I had two cans of those and I did the whole job with one can and still have some left. Now these are small cans. They're eight ounces, but they sprayed okay. I was not, that's one thing I got to say. You definitely had to hold them more straight up than at like I was doing the top of my rig. So I needed it more like that. And I ended up having to kind of do a lot of stuff to try and get it to go. All right, so then you have that on. You've let that dry a little bit. Then we got the clear coat. Now this is the clear coat I started with. Now also I will say this came, I probably bought this, but it's gotta be 10 years. <laughs> um, yet again, my own car, testing stuff out. But since these were Duplicolor, I thought, you know, I have some Duplicolor, it's Mirage. That shows you how, that was back when Mirage was cool. Um, no offense to those of you that have Mirage paint jobs still. I still think they're kind of cool. But anyway, I bought a, a kit that had the whole kit. And I never did finish it. I was going to do a mailbox, actually. Um, but anyway, I never did use it. So I thought, you know, I have this. It's sitting around. I used it on another project, actually over the top of a wood thing I did that I clear coated. And I figured I'd start with this, but actually I still have some in here. It did not shoot at all very well this way. Definitely had to be straight up. So then I went to this here. Um, Rust-Oleum Acrylic Enamel uh, Gloss Crystal Clear. This worked awesome. This, this was much better than this. Yet again, keep in mind that this is old. Now these were new, the paint was new, and they still didn't shoot that great. They were okay, but I definitely had to do some fidgeting to get it to work. This sprayed great no matter what direction I was in, so I really liked the Rust-Oleum. I think I, Rust-Oleum is one of my more favorite. They, they seem to spray well, hide well, cover things up, and do what they need. I need them to do. So I like Rust-Oleum, that's my personal opinion. But this worked much better than this to clear and it left i thought it was going to be orange peely but it actually smoothed out as it dried quite a bit i didn't have you know I've, i haven't wet sanded or done anything to it it's been through a car wash that is the only thing i've done and it's held up through a car wash so um quite honestly i was very happy with this as well so uh color wise very happy spray wise maybe not so much but clear, I was very happy. And I don't think I saw a Rust-Oleum that actually had the color. I cannot remember if there was, and if it was, it might have been more money. I don't know. But regardless, the color turned out very well, and I'm happy with it. The whole thing turned out really good, and I'm pretty darn happy with it. My body work, a little bit ashamed of, but honestly, nobody can, you can't see it. It's not in a place where you can tell that I didn't finish it up the way I should have, I guess. So, sadly to say, I'm fairly happy with it the way it came out. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, if you have any questions or comments about anything on this video, um, about products or anything, any tools or anything like that I used, or if there's something that I left out that was in the video you have questions about please comment below that seems to be the best way to get a hold of me um, and I will do that now I have hundreds of videos out there now I don't know the, num the exact count I'm gonna have to do a video on that and uh, figure that out so if you've enjoyed this please go check out my channel uh, please rate comment subscribe do all that kind of stuff below um, in my channel, I do a lot of DIYer stuff on my house as well as my mom's place and now my kids got a place. So we got a lot of stuff coming up DIY, homeowner type things. Um, I also do a lot of mechanical things on cars as well as some welding, some scrapping, kind of getting out of that. So sorry to all you that like my scrapping videos. But regardless, go check out my channel and hopefully you can find something. Go check out my playlist. My playlists have specific things on every vehicle I have, all my projects, DIY I've done, as well as welding, um, 
all kinds of things. I have several different things that are all in playlists. Most all my videos fit in a playlist somewhere. So go check out my playlist on my channel and hopefully you'll find something you can enjoy. All right. Thanks for watching Junkworks DIY Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all and master none. You all have a good one.